Hello YouTubers, this is Sesta Ace back again with another package video. I received a package from Japan. I actually received this package a number of days ago, but I've been having a lot of trouble with my vertigo and migraines lately, so I haven't been feeling up to doing videos. But anyway, this you may be able to see are used video goggles and you might be saying to yourself what are video goggles well, before I get to that I wanted to show you something that Super Dan 88 made me buy uh, he did a two-part video on buying one of these and after I watched his videos I told him I have got to buy one of those so I immediately jumped to uh, uh, eBay. I bought one from a company in the UK. They shipped it to me. Obviously it uses 220 volts and it's PAL standard so I can't play it. But I have seen an American NTSC equivalent. It's just that I only see it in one place and that's a truck stop that's on our way to my parents house. And on the few times that I've run across it, I haven't had enough money to buy it. And when I have had enough money to buy it, they haven't had it. But what it is, is a Wii clone. Now, it only plays the games built into the system. can't fool me. I play Zuma enough to recognize Zuma when I see it. And then Ball Shooter is Zuma. Anyway, I haven't gotten to the cool part yet. These are standard issue. We accessories. There's also a baseball bat, and you can attach to it ping pong paddles or tennis rackets. But that's not the cool part. I haven't gotten to the cool part yet. I can get it out. Tiny little thing, isn't it? You'll notice on the bottom there's a door. You open that door and there is a Famicom cartridge port. Yes, Martha? This will play the games built into it and Famicom cartridges. I'm I'm really wanting to find the American equivalent to see if it has a Famicom port also or if perhaps it has an NTSC uh, uh, NES port or no port at all which would be a bummer if he saw this and say hey I gotta have that Super Dan 88 gets the credit because he was the one that convinced me to buy one. In fact, he kind of made a joke out of it. He started doing a series called Can I Make You Buy This? And he has come out with some really obscure stuff that we didn't get here in the U.S. How many of you have heard of uh, the Gamate? Well, I'll let you further research that. Before I get to what I received, it is for the VHD video displayer that I bought uh, and received a couple of weeks ago from Japan. The model that I bought 
was uh, made by a national. It's a disc lord. And um, superficially, it can confuse people because on a superficial level, the CED format and the VHD format look like they have a lot of similarities. But in actuality, the similarities that they have are actually uh, inconsequential. Inconsequential. Um, the VHD format is vastly superior. This is a CED disc. This format was developed by RCA. They had intended to launch it in 78. However, in 78 it wasn't ready. So they launched it in 81. It's a capacitance disk system. They called it CED, or Capacitance Electronic Disk. Now, the disk, is, this whole format was designed so the disk would only be in either the caddy or the player, but not anywhere else. The grooves are tiny. It is said that you could put a thousand uh, CED grooves between two grooves on a conventional vinyl record. Also, you had to build a special facility to manufacture these discs. Okay, then came the VHD format. RCA had gone to Japan to try and talk uh, Japanese companies into licensing uh, the system and manufacturing it themselves. The only Japanese company that I know of that they talked into doing that was uh, Hitachi. And I have owned in the past both Hitachi brand and RCA brand CED players. And in my humble opinion, the Hitachi players are much better than the CED players. But you're still de dealing with an inherently flawed design. One company they did try to entice and, and failed was JVC, known simply as Victor, in Japan. Victor had developed their own capacitance disk system, which was vastly superior. And in fact, they said, well, we're not interested in going with your format, but you might be interested in going with ours. And they demonstrated the VHD format. Capacitance disk but no grooves. The discs come housed, well first of all they're in caddies, but the caddies are housed in a slip cover, which is a nice extra touch. Of course now I can't get it out. You'll notice that the caddies on a VHD are smaller. If I can do this right, than a CD. Maybe I'll show it better this way. smaller and lighter and the discs have no grooves so no skipping all of the VHD discs that I have so far play like the day they were made and they abandoned the format around 86 or so so it's a format that really holds up. In fact, uh, VHD discs, uh, from what I understand, tend to hold up better than laser discs. This is one I had to add to the laser disc database, which tracks VHDs, uh, because they didn't have it yet. According to the laser disc database, there are about over 1,100 titles that were released 
on a VHD format. This is another movie that I have on VHD. This is a really obscure French science fiction film. That immediately caught my eye when I saw the cover. I love the Citroën Diaz, which I believe is how it's properly pronounced. Americans tend to pronounce it Citroën Diaz, but I, Europeans, I've heard it pronounced, I've heard them pronounce it Citroën Diaz, which makes more sense because uh, Diaz is, I believe, French for goddess, and she was a goddess. There's a flying one. No English language equivalent on this disc, but they did something neat, something that Central Park Media did when they released the, uh, the anime film Grave of the Fireflies on Laserdisc. And that is they electronically moved up the letterboxed image to nearly the top of the screen. So all you had was a tiny sl uh, sliver of black at the top, and the rest of the black was all beneath the widescreen image and that's where they put the subtitles in this case the Japanese subtitles really really cool and they designed this system so that any standard player would play any standard disc right, what I mean by that is any NTSC player would play any PAL or CCAM disc, and vice versa. But as the format was only released in Japan, I don't think that there were ever any PAL releases, but it was designed to, be, to work that way. Now, another cool design feature of the format is that some of the players are 3D compatible or 3D capable. Some titles were released in 3D. So they sold these things. This is a national brand VHD 3D scope headgear. Model DA-92A. Victor made them as well as I believe other companies did. Um, the guy I bought the player in, these, uh, this headgear from, he tried plugging in a Victor scope headgear into his, into, well, it was his national uh, player, but it's now my national player, and it worked perfectly. So, theoretically, the reverse should be true. Complete in box. The headgear is designed so that it fits all sizes, skull, adjustable. There's the plug. There are two plugs on the front of my player. So I'm assuming that both are uh, 3D ports. I can't remember if I mentioned this or not. Some players are 3D capable and some aren't. The ones that have 3D mode, you could be sitting there watching uh, a movie in 3D and some friends show up and so uh, you'll need to see it in 2D then because you won't be able to hook up 100 or 20 or whatever uh, of these to your player. So all you'll do is flip the 3D switch from on to off and it goes to 2D mode. Really, really cool. Now one of the problems I've always had with 3D glasses is trying to fit them over my regular glasses. It's a pain in the butt. And usually what happens is um, because the lenses are so close together, um, the 3D glasses that make my regular glasses sweat. So I'm constantly having to wipe them off. You don't have that problem with these. 
because the glasses are not touching it in any way, shape, manner, or form. So, and you don't have to worry about them falling off or anything. Really, really cool, I think. So, did I make you want to buy one of these? I hope so. Oh, and incidentally, if I fail to mention it, they did publish, in addition to a lot of anime, erotica on VHD and some that were some erotica in 3D in VHD. Well, extra enticement for you if you needed something extra to entice you. As these discs, the VHD discs, could be manufactured by any vinyl record pressing facility, there's a possibility that somebody can get up the gumption to approach one of the uh, vinyl pressing plants and uh, say, hey, I want a uh, limited release on a video I did. I want to release it on the VHD format, um, give them the particulars, and they should be able to make it. That's how JVC designed the system to work. Okay, enough of that. Now I'm going to play this video back and see if I made any mistakes. And I didn't hear the phone ring at all during this video. I have a number of packages coming. I have more laser discs and VHDs coming. I have uh, and two separate orders. I have more VCDs coming from Hong Kong. I just got a batch in the other day, but I'm getting another batch in. And what I have noticed and find interesting is movies released in 2011 or are, are published on VCD. I would have thought VCD would have died by now, but it hasn't. There are still publishers that are supporting VCD. Anyway, in addition to that, I have uh, an order coming from Sinister Cinema. I've, since last time I showed DVDs, I have received two packages from Sinister Cinema, so I would have received three packages by the time um, I get that package. Looking for something. I ain't find it. Ah. Speaking of Sinister Cinema. I don't know if he pronounces his name Luce or Lucy. It's spelled L-U-C-E. But the guy who runs Sinister Cinema, his name is Greg Luce. Or Lucy. And they've gotten into publishing obscure science fiction and fantasy both classic stuff and trash but the idea is to publish books that haven't been seen in years and years and years first time in paperback and these are doubles Kind of like what Ace was doing back in the 60s, and I guess 70s too. They did the same thing. They had doubles. And for however little it was, 35 cents, 25 cents, you got two novels. Once you finished reading the first novel, you turned it over to the back side and you read the other novel. Those, by the way, have become collectible, and they're expensive if they're in good, uh, really good condition. Anyway, I have approached, well, I approached Greg uh, right after he started the armchair fiction arm of Sinister Cinema to see if he would be willing to publish an English language version of the long-running German science fiction series, Perry Roden. In the 70s, Ace was publishing English language translations in paperback form. 
but they stopped at around 120, 130, whatever it was. Well, by that time, the German run was well over a thousand, and they have continued to be published, and they publish a new adventure every week. So, um, it would take a lot to catch up, because there are over 3,000 by now, should be. But I sent him another email, Greg Luce, and asked him, because he had told me uh, he didn't feel comfortable approaching the German publisher yet, because um, he was just starting out publishing fiction, and he didn't really have much to show them as far as quality. I know one of the publishers after Ace in the U.S. that started publishing under license, Perry Roden, had their license yanked because uh, the German publisher didn't like the quality. But if they were published with this kind of quality, I imagine the German publisher would have no objection whatsoever. So here's what I want you to do. You don't have to. Don't mention my name. But if you go to Sinister Cinema's website, on the left-hand side, there are some links, and there's a link that says email. Click on that, and um, you can send an email. Make it uh, to the attention of Greg Luce, L-U-C-E, and say, these books are really nice. Have you ever considered publishing Perry Rodin? Or Rodin? I don't know, Americans tend to pronounce it Rodin. Europeans tend to pronounce it Rodin. So I'll go with Rodin since that's the way Germans pronounce it. I think it would be really cool. Until next time, stay awesome. Hello, YouTubers. This is Cessna Ace back again with another package video. I received a package from Japan. I actually received this package a number of days ago, but I've been having a lot of trouble with my vertigo and migraines lately, so I haven't been feeling up to doing videos. But anyway, this, you may be able to see our used video goggles. And you might be saying to yourself, what are video. It's just that I only see it in one place and that's a truck stop that's on our way to my parents house and on the few times that I've run across it I haven't had enough money to buy it and when I have had enough money to buy it they haven't had it. But what it is is a Wii clone. Now, it only plays the games built into the system, EO goggles. Well, before I get to that, I wanted to show you something that SuperDan88 made me buy. Uh, he did a two-part video on buying one of these. And after I watched his videos, I told him... I have got to buy one of those. So I immediately jumped to uh, eBay. I bought one from a company in the UK. They shipped it to me. Obviously it uses 220 volts and it's PAL standard so I can't play it. But I have seen an American NTSC equivalent. Can't fool me. I play Zuma enough to recognize Zuma when I see it. And then ball shooter is Zuma. Anyway, I haven't gotten to the cool part yet. These are standard issue. We accessories. There's also a baseball bat. And you can attach to it ping pong paddles or tennis rackets. But that's not the cool part. I haven't gotten to the cool part yet. Uh, 
and get it out. Tiny little thing, isn't it? You'll notice on the bottom there's a door. You open that door 